<laughs> well, that's good, Van. She went over to say hi to you. That's, that's good. Maybe she'll head on down the table and say hello. Uh, okay, we're, we're, we've, been looking at, we've been looking at Genesis in, in 20 words or less. Tell me what's happened. Creation. Lord made, okay. made the earth. Creation. We got God creating stuff. And he made Adam and Eve. Okay. We got Adam and Eve. What are, what are some of the, the, the patterns that we've seen? What have we seen in, going on in the, the general, uh, Genesis story in, in a bigger sense? Because we, we've encountered different names, yeah. right? And who are some of the names we've encountered? Adam and Eve, you said. Noah. We talked about Noah. Yeah. Jacob, Abraham. what's that? It's Jacob. Jacob, Abraham, Esau. Uh, Esau. Esau. I, for some reason, I'm not hearing as well today as <laughs> so. Be, be aware of that. I'm not. For some reason, I'm, my hearing isn't great. Uh, Esau, we talked about. Cain and Abel, we talked about. Say Isaac. You know, nobody said Isaac yet, but Isaac, we talked about. So all of these people Sarah we talked and about. Rebecca. Sarah and Rebecca, sure, and uh, we'll run across another one today, a couple more today, uh, and, and all of these names are, are really important because they're, they're part of the story. I mentioned it though a few, uh, a few weeks ago though, this really isn't the story of, of Adam, and this really isn't the story of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob or Noah, Cain and Abel, it's, it's really not their story. Who's, whose story is it? God. It's a story. This is a story of God. And it's God acting with respect to humanity. And humanity are these, we've talked about these issues. And they have faced. Now, consistently, the people in the story, how would you describe them? If you take them all together, how would you describe the people that we've, you've mentioned? In fact, every single name you've mentioned. What could you say followers. about the people? Okay, they were they were followers, certainly connected to God, following God. What else might you say about them? So they were godly people, you know, with the exception of maybe Canyon, you know. But what else would what else might you say they about? They weren't them? worthy of worship. Yeah, yeah, they they all of them were kind of flawed, you know. They they all carry some flaw inside of them, even either by what they, who they are, by what they've done. So they, they're by and large good people, but they're none of them like are, are perfect. Yeah, yeah they're none not of, perfect. None of them are perfect. Yeah, a lot like us. And so that's kind of been, but what can you say about God? If this is his story, what can you say about, He's about God? Faithful. Okay, God is, God is faithful. Um, compassionate. God is compassionate. He always bails them out. <laughs> he, he's uh, <laughs> so parental, uh, bail, you know. Bail bondsman. <laughs> bail bond. Well, yeah. He provides. <laughs> okay, he provides. Uh, now that's really interesting because what you're describing are very positive traits, right? That we would look at it and at another person and if they have those traits, we say, oh, that's really positive. One of the other things, though, that God has done is all of these people have been chastised. Has been, have been chastised and held accountable, I'm, I was thinking. Uh, so it's not a sort of a capricious chastisement, like just he's, God wakes up one morning and he's in a bad mood, so he zaps some people. They, they, uh, people pay consequences for their action. God is still providing and still faithful and still Just. there, but there's a, that's combined with a justice because God, people are held accountable for what they, they do and they don't do. And so that's all part of this story of God, which is good because we're learning about who God is as he relates not just to them, but as he relates to us. And he also get, tells them, you know, uh, whatever he tells them, like getting a, a lot of, I can't talk, a lot of like animals and land and that sort of thing if they... Okay, okay good. And, you know, again, Shelly, you always jump ahead a little bit. And, but this one is short because that was exactly what I was going to ask before we get into it. Ever since we looked at Abraham, we've been dealing with 
what? What word grace. can you? Well, grace certainly, grace. but covenant. covenant. We've been talking about covenant. Grace is, is true too, but we've been talking about covenant. And that's, Shelley, what you were saying, that God has made these promises, promises. or terms. And what God is going to do is God is going to what? Bless them. Or going to bless them. And, and how is God going to bless What's the two things that God is going to give these folks? People, land. He's going to give them people and he's going to give them land. He's going to give them descendants, he's going to give them land. That's his side of the contract. And what does he want from Obedience. Abraham and Isaac, and we'll see today Jacob. What does he want? Well, j- obedience in one string and trust in, trust in the other, and you take them together. So you take those those two different stories, you kind of combine them into, you know, he's looking for faith and obedience. But as the, the guy who puts this story together, he leaves those two strains separate, you know, which I think is kind of cool rather than kind of merge them into one. But that's what that's the covenant we have that rests on God's promises and our trust and obedience. Like the old song, trust and obey kind of deal. Okay, so all of this is grounded. Now, we've done the Abraham story, right? And we've, we did the Isaac story, although the Isaac story ends kind of in an interesting, interesting way. And again, we, we butt up against the fact that the uh, redactor, the one who's putting the story together, is, is drawing on different traditions. And so remember, we looked at last week at the end of... Uh, what, what chapter were we working with? Chapter, well, we were in chap, end of 27 yeah. and 28. Uh, we've got two, we got the sort of the Jacob story ending in two different ways. And in one way, you know, Jacob has done what to his, what has Jacob done with his twin brother? Cheated. He's cheated him. You know, he cheated him twice. I mean, the first time with the birthright, you could say, well, he made a deal and Esau was stupid and made a bad bargain. You know, and that's really not, you know, hold it against Jacob. Uh. But the second time, that, right that, that was really bad. I mean, he cheated, he lied to his father to, to get something that didn't belong to him, but, he, but it wasn't just him by himself. No, his mother. Yeah, his mother, Rebecca. But, but when she talked to who What's the other one? Esau. Yeah. She, yeah. She, when she talked to Jacob about what happened, she never said, she, you know, wait till your brother gets over being angry and why he did that. She never come out and said, I'm the one who sent him in there. Right. She didn't take the blame. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. So, so Rebecca doesn't come off looking no. good. But Rebecca knows something that <coughs> Jacob, Esau, and Isaac don't know. And what does Rebecca know? What does the writer tell her? Tell us Rebecca knew that the other ones didn't, and it's a pretty big thing to know. That Jacob was going to be a big. That Jacob was going to carry the promise. Yes. That he was going to be the one. Now you say, well, she must have told somebody. Well, show me the verse in there where it says she told Isaac. You know, show me. You, you, you're not going to be able to because it's not there. So we've got to we reading this story. We assume then that unless. The writer tells us it it didn't happen. So Rebecca knows what's going to happen with Jacob, but there's no indication that even Jacob knew what was going to happen to Jacob. But Rebecca did. And we see Rebecca kind of cooking the books so that the blessing falls on the one she knows is going to carry the promise. Okay, now, interesting. So he, he lies to his father gets the blessing that belongs to his brother, right? Mm -hmm. And it would appear as though his father expires, dies, because it talks about them mourning Isaac. You know, that they're mourning, and after the mourning is over, you know, Rebecca tells Jacob, what? you you got to get out of town, because once we stop mourning for your, your dad, Esau, once that period is done, Esau is going to come after you, yeah. and it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Now, we're at the end of 27. That's going to be bad. So you got to beat it out of town. I'll tell you where you can hide out. You can hide out with, with uh-huh. your uncle, my brother. Yeah. You can hide out with Laban, and he'll keep you safe until 
Esau calms down, cools down a little bit. And that's one, that's one strain. And then we shift to another one. You know, where we've got all of a sudden Isaac alive again. And with Rebecca. And what's, what's the issue with at the end of, uh, or in the beginning of 28? Uh, he's not supposed to marry a Hittite. He doesn't want to because his brother married a Hittite. And Hittites, we all know, are what? Bad. Bad. Well, what, what, what term did I use? No good. No. They're no good. <laughs> you know, Hittites are no good. And, and so he doesn't want, doesn't want Jacob to marry a Hittite because Esau did. And, you know, Hittites, they whine and they come. That's awful. Uh, uh, some of them can be downright intimidating. Uh, and, and so she says, no, 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 no. Don't marry a Hittite. Both of them say, we don't want, you know, another Hittite daughter-in-law. Why don't you go to Laban and do what? Wife from his find wife. a find a wife from your family because it is much better marrying a cousin than marrying a Hittite. There was so yeah. much intermarriage back then. Yeah, so much. And I'll, I'll tell you, having lived in West Virginia, they follow that this biblical standard <laughs> firmly oh in, in a lot of holidays. Yeah, uh, so there, there was no admonition, not or law, not yeah, to marry yeah. until Moses. Yeah, there's a, uh, a, a and you one of the things it's. You want to keep lines pure. And so that's why there was a lot of lines pure. Okay. You know, you could you could ensure the limit. Oh yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that you caused could a lot them. of mental things yeah. It caused a lot of other things, mm -hmm. you know, that, that were going on. You know, Tutankhamun was a strange looking little little kid, but his mother and father may have been brothers and sisters. So it's uh, a lot of that was practice anyway. Uh, so sends him away to Laban. Uh, so we've got two reasons why he's going to Laban: uh, one to hide out, and one to find a wife. And the writer knows that that we're talking about two different stories, but that's what he wants to present. So as he goes, there's hostility with Esau. So we want to file that away. But we also have him in this story seeking a wife, and that's where we kind of pick up. In, in 28. So we've got Jacob going, and as Jacob is going to Laban, what, uh, what happens to him along the way? He has, he has a, a dream. And uh, what happens in this, in this dream? Gosh, I forget. Jacob's life. You have Jacob's yes. life. Yes. Uh, he he envisions this this ladder. And what's going on on the ladder? God's talking to him. Well, what, what's, what, yes, he will, but what's happening on the ladder? He's going up. Oh, you got angels going up and down the ladder. Now, that seems stupid to me because that seems like a pretty inefficient system since angels should be able to do what? Fly. Fly down, <laughs> flutter down. But, of course, angels did not acquire their wings until the Middle Ages. Oh. So there was no, angels did not have big wings until much later. So the only way, what's that? They don't really have wings. Well, there's, that's, that was later. Sounds better. You know, they were paintings and stuff. Yeah. So you didn't have, so the only way an angel could get down from heaven to earth is to climb a ladder. You know, and you know, a, the dream of an escalator just didn't look as good. So it's a, a ladder with angels coming up and down. And what ends up happening during this dream? God talks to him. Okay, God talks to him. Now, again, he's talk, this is a, a, a vision. And so it's, even though the Lord is mentioned here, God is also talked to him. This is probably not one of those Lord deals where God just shows up in front of you. He's communicating through a vision, not a voice from heaven, but through a dream. And that was really the a characteristic of that third strain. We're going to see another characteristic also in the story of this of the strain of stories that are kind of blended in. They play a big role in the Jacob stories. Anyway, so he has this vision and what happens in this vision as the Lord appears to him in a dream? He tells him he's going to have a lot of kids. Okay, he tells him he's going to have going to have a lot of kids. Okay, and and so what is he doing? What is what is 
God doing in this dream? All people will be blessed. Okay, he's making the he's reinforcing the covenant. Now we heard this with Abraham, right? This covenant. Did we see? Did we see the same thing happen with Isaac? Same thing happened with Isaac. You know, the covenant is made almost anew with him. We get the covenant made with Jacob. Okay, so we, although I said last week, and you want it's one of these things you file away. You don't worry about it, but you file away. Rebecca wasn't the only one who knew Jacob was going to carry the covenant, the promise, because we, the reader, knew. Because the writer tells us, you know, but history told us. Yeah, well, but looking back, but in the story itself, we know something that other people in the story don't know, and that's really something important to remember when we, even when you're reading the Gospels, we're told a lot of stuff that people in the story don't know, like motivations and feelings, and you know, we know a lot more than they know, and so we want to be aware of that. We're not part, supposed to be part of the story. We're looking down on the story. We're looking almost from God's perspective because we know what God knows in, in the Gospels. And here we know what God knows in this Genesis story. We know, the, we hear the voice of God in the story. Other people know necessarily. Okay, so God reinforces this covenant. Now, what becomes really interesting is he's making this covenant to Jacob. And you remember what the name Jacob means, right? What, what does the name Jacob mean? Surplanter, cheat, liar, thief, heel. You know, he is, this is the, like the worst name you can give a kid. You know, he's going to be a liar, a cheat. And, and so he, his name doesn't indicate, you know, and he was holding his brother's heel when he was born, for crying out loud. And Jacob's history to this point has been what? Yeah, cheating his brother twice, you know, you know. Cheating his brother twice. So, you know, he doesn't have a great background, and yet God is doing what? Blessing him. Blessing him and making a covenant with him. That's what mm-hmm. I wondered what, about the whole thing. Why would he bless someone of his son? Why That's indeed it would why would God bless Jacob? Why is Jacob going to be carrying the covenant? Why? Because he's like us. Well, he is like us, because everybody, a lot of people are like and us. When God takes us. The yeah. That we are. Why? But why Jacob? Why is it Jacob? I mean, he, he, he could pick a lot of it. Easy could have picked Esau. Why Jacob? Jacob why is, is Jacob stronger? Okay, you could say he's stronger, but how is Esau described? Uh, great hunter. Either Esau is a great hunter. Great hunter. Uh, doesn't God always take the worst of the bunch and make him look better? <laughs> yeah. How does Paul explain it? And we've ta- we talked about it when we studied Romans and we talked about it a little bit last week. How does Paul explain why God chose? And, and in Malachi, Paul will quote Malachi. And in Malachi it says, God chose to love Jacob and hate Esau. Why did God do that? Because he could. Because he could. Because God is God. And it's God's choice. And remember, Paul says, but you understand, God is always working. What are the two words, Barb? What? Mercy, mercy, and, mercy and compassion. God is always merciful, always compassionate. Therefore, he's showing mercy and compassion by choosing Jacob and not Esau. Because it's going to be through Jacob that we're going to have... All the descendants of We're going to have land. landing to Jesus Christ. You know, it's going to be through Jacob, not Esau, that Judah's going to come and through Judah Christ. I didn't think God hated. I, you know, it's well, one thing to hear that he hated. It's, it's, called, it's called hyperbole. Yes. And, and that's a literary technique where if I, say to, um, if I say to somebody and I'm really mad, man, I'm going to kill you, I don't really mean no. it. No. But I, it shows that I'm really angry. Yeah. That's hyperbole. Uh, if I said, you know, I'm so mad, I hope you have some unfortunate consequences of your actions. That's not <laughs> hyperbole, you know, because that's what I want. But if I'm going to kill you or I hate you, you know, how many times do kids say that to parents? I hate you. Oh, yeah. Well, they don't. You know, it's hyperbole and it's used to make a, a point. But it does reflect that God didn't love Esau and really love Jacob. You know, Jacob was the one he chose. 
And Paul says that's really important for us to recognize because he'll quote that because God is God. And we got to we either recognize that God is in control or we're in control. And if we recognize that we're in control, we are in trouble. Trouble. big trouble, you know, because we're going to screw it up, mm-hmm. you know. So we're not going to be able to do it. And that's why that's the God, uh, Paul's point is uh, that that God is in control. Therefore, we should be happy God is in control because God can handle things better than we. Uh, but well, this is what we have here. Yeah, I think it also shows that. Our ways are not God's ways, and, God, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. It goes back to whenever David was chosen. He wasn't the, the mightiest or anything right. like that. That it's God knows what's best, and we just have to believe that. God, God is in control, and God is mercy. God's will is mercy and compassion. And as long as we hold on to that, then it's, then it's easy. I think it's easier, not necessarily easy, but easier uh, that this is what this is how God works, and His view is an eternal view. Ours is a temporal. We view things in terms of, you wow. know, an hour or a week or fifty years. That's our perspective. God's perspective is eternal, eternal. and so that becomes really, really different. So, you know, that, that's what we need to keep in mind. And like I said, Paul uses this. This very thing a lot. Okay, so he has this vision. You're going to carry the promise. This becomes an important place. In fact, he names this place. What? What, what, did he, what does he call this place? Where, Luz. and he puts up a pillar, and it's, it was called Luz, but he says, we're going to call it Bethel. And, and Bethel means house of God. That's what it means. What's interesting is, remember we talked about Isaac and Abraham. And a lot of what Isaac and Abraham did was around a place called Beersheba, Beersheba, mm-hmm. which is in the far south. Bethel is in the north. And so this is the whoever is writing these stories has a northern perspective because those are the cities he knows. We're going to see that throughout, in fact, a lot of the Jacob stories and almost all of the Joseph stories are going to involve north. And so whoever's writing these stories are writing for people who identify with a northern part of Palestine, not a southern, because they're going to give locations up north. Uh, just a, just a little, little interesting. It's interesting as you look at how it develops. Okay, so this is, he gets the promise. So we know as a reader, the writer has told us that Jacob is going to be the one who carries the promise, right? And boy, oh boy, then Jacob, in, starting in 29, becomes Jacob. He acts like a real Jacob, uh, starting in 29. What, what happens in, in 29? Okay, Jacob, Jacob is head and east, right? Head and east, because he's heading towards Laban, right? Okay, and he, and he finds a well. Oh man, I am experiencing deja vu all over again. You know, here's a patriarch, patriarch at a well. A lot of wealth. Yeah, yeah, and we know Jacob is looking for a wife. At least that's what, you know, it's, we heard in 28. He's looking for a wife. He's at a well. When did this happen before? Oh, Jesus at the well. Well, Jesus did. That's, let, oops. <laughs> Whoa, I got so excited I threw it. Uh, Jesus, that's right. Jesus at the well, but who ha- when did it happen before Jesus? Uh, when they were fighting over the sheep well. You, they had a controversy over sheep wells with both Isaac and Abraham. When else did it happen? Isaac and Rebecca Rebecca was at a well, remember? You know, but Abraham sent the servant and at the well, ooh. We got the same sort of motif going on again. You know, they're at, they're at uh, a well, only this time it isn't a servant, this time it's Jacob, because Jacob is looking for the wife himself. Yeah, so he's at the well, and what makes this well kind of special? It's where they take the sheep every day and okay. water them. Okay, they water the sheep. And, and what do they do to protect the well? Okay, they got a big stone. To, pr- to protect the well. And they water the sheep. Now, as he's there at this well, who shows up? 
Okay. Well, not Rebecca. Rachel, Rachel shows up. Rachel. And Rachel shows up, and what is she doing? Bringing her sheep to water. She is bringing, well, not her sheep, her, her, daddy, her daddy's sheep. Her daddy. Yeah, the sheep that she's watching, because she's watching her daddy's sheep. And the writer, again, makes sure we know her daddy's name is Laban, Laban. and Laban is Rebecca's, Rebecca's Jacob's mother's brother. brother. Um, and so we got Rachel there, and she's got the sheep. And the um, what does Jacob do yeah. for Rachel? He moves the stone. He, he moves the stone. Even though the guys, the other guys there say, "Got to wait for all the sheep." Got to wait for all the sheep. We don't move the stone, stone until all the sheep. Evidently, Jacob wants to things along. impress. <laughs> Impress mm -hmm. Rachel, yeah. so he moves moves the sheep, and it must have impressed. She waters the sheep, and it must have impressed him, because what ends up happening? He kisses, he kisses her. Forward. Right, he kisses her, and um, then what? Says he's his relative. Okay, then I'm, I'm your cousin, and Jacob says hot dog. Uh, yeah, the uh, that's that's okay. And she runs and tells her her daddy, and uh, when she tells her daddy about meeting Jacob, what does Laban do? He goes out and embraces him. And kisses okay, him. runs out and embraces Jacob. Now we've in, we've encountered Laban. He's not new to the story. What what impressions did we receive about Laban? That he was excited to in see the him. in the Rebecca story way back in the Rebecca. We got some things we learned about Laban back when it was his sister. You know, when the guy from Ab from Abraham comes He's and looking to make a prize. Yeah, Laban is kind of looking to score. You know, he really is. He's looking. He's but he keeps he's a little shady. He's, he, he, Laban's a little shady. Remember, he got real excited when uh, Rebecca had all that jewelry on, mm -hmm. you know, and that nose ring, you know, and those earrings, you know. And he was the one that said, oh, yeah, 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 she'll, she'll go with you. Why don't you go ahead and she'll catch up with you, you know. And, uh, and Laban and uh, the servant says, eh, I don't think that's a good idea, you know. I don't she think he cheats him. Yeah. But he cheats. Yeah. He cheats Jacob. Yeah. He uh, Le so we already have an impression Laban is not on the up and up. But poor Jacob, he's uh, as honest as the day is long, right? <laughs> Lord have mercy, they deserve one another. Yeah. We got little Jacob and Laban, and neither one of them would you want the, to date your daughter. And I'm not going to talk about intimidating. Uh, you wouldn't want you to wouldn't want either one of them to date your daughter because neither one are very nice people. They they just aren't. And so Jacob goes and spends goes to Laban's house. Now, do we hear God mentioned at all in this? But remember, this is God's story. So we've got God sort of in the background of all of this, even though He's not explicitly mentioned. Which is something we're going to see more and more in the story from this I point in Genesis. I think it shows how mankind uh, manipulates to get what they think they want, and then God uses. And them. God is always involved. Is always yeah, yeah. Who's really in control? Well, God's really in control. Mm -hmm. um, so okay, so Laban's there, and Jacob's been hanging around his house for ten days, and this is very polite. You know, but Laban finally says to Jacob, What's up, Neil? Yeah, yeah, you know, you're going to have to do something around here. You just can't lay around on the sofa all day. You've done it for 10 days. Okay. It's yeah, what's going to happen? You know, what kind of wages can I pay you for finally doing some work? work. work? And, and what does Jacob say to Laban? He wants to get mad. Well, I want to get married. I, I really like your daughter. Now, Laban's got, when he says, I really like your daughter, Laban's got two, two daughters. Uh, one is Rachel. And how is Rachel described? 
Beautiful. She is beautiful and graceful. And how, what's the other daughter? Leah. Leah. And how is Leah described? Rough. Weak eyes. She's got weak, weak eyes. eyes. <laughs> not, not unlike, and I'm not going to tell you the story again, that I have good teeth. <laughs> that I have good teeth. The older, good teeth. She has weak eyes. But let's call them beautiful when she has weak eyes. Uh, so we got these two girls, Leah and Rachel. Jacob is in love with Rachel. Rachel. And he says, the, that's, Rachel is the one that I will work for. I will work for because I want to marry Rachel. And Laban says, well, I think we got a deal. You work for me seven years. Seven years. Seven. Ooh. Seven. Complete. Complete. Yeah. Perfect number. To get Rachel. Yeah. yeah you you work, you work for me seven years because it is far better that she married somebody in the family uh, than somebody, than a stranger. Like, you know, that Hittite boy that lives down the street. Don't want to marry her, him because he is what? No good. no good. Okay, so don't want to marry him. I'll marry, I think she should marry her cousin. And uh, Jacob says, sounds like a deal to me. And Jacob does what? Works seven years. Works for him seven years, but it seems like no time at all. No time at all. It seems like only a few days because he is so much in love with Rachel, you know. And when the seven years ends, he goes to to Laban and says, "Laban, I did my part, Rachel. Yes, Give me my wife. today is payday. Uh, so I want my wife." And Laban says, "Okay." okay. Uh, but you know we're gonna we're gonna have a party because we're gonna have a little wedding here, right? Yep. And so they have their little party, and maybe this is an ancient marriage ceremony. I don't know. It could certainly. It, it's no indication that it's not, which you appear to be. And part of the marriage ceremony is is well, they are have their party in down. And Jacob goes into his little tent, and Rachel goes into a, different into a different tent, and Laban says to Leah, and Jacob wakes up in the morning and says, Oh no! Oh my <laughs> gosh! Look at those weak eyes! <laughs> Instead of the, you know, look at those weak eyes. What has happened? And so he goes to, what's the first thing he does? He goes to Laban. He goes to Laban, you know, Daddy Laban, right? And says... Cheater. Yeah, cheater, what the heck is going on? And, and Laban says... Oh, custom. Oh, oh, you, oh, I... I forgot to tell you, in the fine print of the contract we agreed to, that custom here is that... The youngest daughter doesn't marry before the oldest. Especially if the oldest daughter, her only quality is weak eyes. <laughs> you know, the younger daughter cannot marry before her sister. I, did, I know I mentioned it to you. I, I, your initials are beside beside that little little clause. little paragraph, that clause. Yeah, you're, you're, uh, I'll call, ask Cass if that would stand up in court. Um, oh, well, but I want to be a fair man. Laban says, I want to be a fair man. Because clearly, you love... So it's your part of the contract. Rachel, yes. Right. You, clearly you love Rachel. Rachel and you got stuck with Leah, now Laban is free of Leah, you know. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. And what does Laban do? Work another seven years. Mm -hmm. Well, leisure. but it's a little different. Well, you gotta wait the week. You gotta yeah. wait a week because we don't want to hurt Leah's feelings quite yet, yeah. right? And <laughs> I'll pay you up front and you That's work it. seven. I will pay you up front. So in a week, we'll have another wedding. 
for you and, and Leo understand. I mean, they're sisters and all. Uh, we'll have another wedding and you can marry Rachel now. And so you'll get paid, oh, but you're going to have to work for seven, years. Seven, seven more years. And now, now, Jacob, and this should make you really, really exciting, excited. Now you have two wives. Two wives. And they're sisters. And one of them is beautiful and graceful, and the other one. And one of them you love, and the other one. Has we got it? Yes. Okay. And that's not going to cause any conflict. Oh no, that's that sounds perfect, right? Sounds like a perfect deal. I'd I'd have stopped at the two wives. You know, just put the brakes on right there. You know, one wife is enough. Uh, you two is kind of scary. Uh, the um, but. She says, no, 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 no. So Laban says, this is what we're going to do. And Jacob says, I love her, I'll do it. Well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Now, again, do we have God mentioned in this? No. But. He's there. Working behind, working behind the scenes. Now, so Jacob is married to two girls, right? <laughs> Sounds like something from, from, um, the Brady Bunch. You know, somehow we married two girls. And um, what God sees, the Lord sees, that Leah is, Not you know, wife number one. two. Yeah, she's number one in terms, in terms of age and in terms of marriage, but clearly number two. Now, something else we know about Leah is when Leah got married, she got a gift, right, from Laban. And what was the gift she got from Laban? Zilpah. She got a gift of her servant. Now, because Leah is clearly unloved, God blesses her, yeah, right? The child. And Rachel has a problem. You will be shocked at this problem because we haven't <laughs> run into this problem one time, right? What is Rachel's problem? She's barren. She's barren. You know, she's another one that's barren. Okay, so she's barren, and Leah, let's just say Leah is... Producing. Is Perfect. not, yes. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Is productive, you know. Leah is productive. But the, the writer says that this is work of God, you know, work of God. So, man, Leah is, is popping these kids out, right? And who's the first one? Reuben, and it's not mentioned here, but we all know Reuben becomes really important later in the story. He becomes the inventor of the sandwich. Uh, so, um, okay. So we got Reuben is the is the, he will become important important later uh, in the Joseph story. So Reuben is first, because that's a, one of the northern tribes. Now one of the things we have to start thinking about is eventually where do these tribes end up locating? And Reuben becomes one of the northern ones. Uh, so we got Reuben here, boom. She doesn't stop a Reuben, right? What's next? Simeon. Simeon, oh, Simeon, what's next? Levi. Levi, who's next? Ooh. Judah. Judah. Oh, Judah's number four. Well, that's kind of interesting because when we look at, like Jesus, he isn't the descendant of Reuben. He becomes a descendant of Judah, as does David. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. You know, that's, well, we'll have to file that away a little yeah. bit. And, and Judah becomes a tribe associated with the south, not the north. Okay, so we've got, and, and then that's it. So she's got these kids. Now, now how does uh, Rachel react? It's all Jacob. She's, she's married. <laughs> and so, of course, she goes to Jacob. And she says, Jacob... What that? Give me a child. Yeah, you better give me a child. And Jacob says, answers his phone because what we don't know is what we is that uh, Rachel calls him on the phone. 
Yeah. And uh, tells him. <laughs> yeah, actually, he ta- she texted him. Um, but she, she says, give me a child. I, I want a child because Leah is lording it over me and making me feel like dirt. And, re- and um, Jacob says, because he's a compassionate man, just like his granddaddy uh, with Hagar. Well, it's my fault. Yeah, he says, it's not my fault. You know, blame God, don't blame me. You know? And Obviously, it's not my fault. I'm doing my part. Yeah. <laughs> And so what what does now we find out that Rachel has a maid too. If Zilpah was Leah's, Rachel has Bilhah. Bilha. So Bilha is her and so and we we've, we've seen this before, right? Mm-hmm. Rachel sa- Rachel says, "Okay, I got it." Bilha, do your stuff. Yeah, do you do your stuff. And so she sends in in Bilhah. Now, it's kind of interesting because if you've ever read uh, The Handmaid's Tale uh, or seen, it's a, it's a television thing, too. Uh, th- this is what they ground it on, you know, applying it in a, in a modern society that these handmaidens are sent in by wives that are barren to bear children for the wife. Uh, for the family, and that's what's happening here. That, yeah, but that doesn't always that's work because say. when they finally start blesses them with a child, then then you got you got a bunch of other kids. Yeah. Well, okay. no, not that. I meant they, you know, her her children then would be over her major. Yes, children. yeah, yeah. In terms of in terms yes. of line. So okay, so she sends in Belha, and it must work because Belha had a son. Yeah, it has a couple of kids, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, she names one of them. Probably one of the dullest names, uh, you know, among all the kids. She names him Dan. 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 Judge. I mean, good night. When you have Issachar coming and you name this guy Dan, you know, geez Louise. That's that's kind of kind of sad. I didn't even and, think you think about the name Dan with all the how their names are. You would never think Dan would be. Well, but it's well, it's, 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 it's 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 all grounded in Hebrew words. Uh-huh. And, and in fact, they, they will tell you why it's named Dan, because God has judged me. So that yes. becomes the Hebrew basis for the name Dan. Oh, okay. All of them have, have other names. And, and then now that Leah stopped having kids, but Rachel is having kids by her maid right and left. Now, what does Leah do? She starts having kids again. Well... Before well, she starts she, having kids Naphtali again. Before this happened. What's that? We had Naphtali before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we yeah. So we, we got kids being produced. Okay. You know, we got kids being more kids being produced, and Leah's looking at that and she's saying, you know, I'm not bearing kids, but Rachel's having kids by this maid. Therefore, I think. I better give my. Yeah, I got a maid too, and so Zilpa, <laughs> go do your stuff. And Ray, so Zilpa does it, and poor old Jacob, poor old Jacob. He ought to be he worn, worn out. out. Yeah, he is. He is worn out. It's going to age uh, him. Yeah. <laughs> so he's uh, he's having more kids, and we got Gad, you know, and and Asher, and then we've got this interesting little story. So we've got we've got all these kids being produced, right? By by. Leah and Bilha and Zilpa. But Rachel still hasn't had any kids, right? And so um, what does Reuben, Leah's oldest boy, do? We got two two things that are kind of interesting in in these stories we're looking at today. What does Reuben do for his mom? He finds mandrakes. He finds mandrakes. Now, what is a what is a mandrake? I don't know. Well, I was gonna there, say, aren't they mean? In my explanation, it's a plant. It is. That it could superstitiously thought to induce pregnancy, and it's also thought to be an aphrodisiac. Mandrake. A mandrake is a plant. Has a purple flower, and it's 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 toxic. Mandrakes are, are toxic. But a mandrake is also, if used properly, can be used as a narcotic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's kind of got narcotic qualities. 
and in it, it so it can make you high. Mandrakes can can make you as a narcotic and can actually put you out. In fact, early on when they did surgeries, then you know they used mandrakes to put the person out. You know, although using too much will put them out. Permanently, permanently. So gave mandrakes, and mandrakes is a narcotic. So the, and aphrodisiac, yeah, but a lot of that is associated with the fact that it's a narcotic. Yeah, it's a narcotic. And, and so he get, picks his mom some mandrakes, and what does, uh, what does she do with the mandrakes? Yeah, she, she she ends up doing. First, Rachel says, "Hey, I got. I see you got some mandrakes here. Could you give me some? Could you could you share?" And Leah says, "No, not on your not on your Nelly. You know, I'm not going to share with you these mandrakes." And so, what happens with the mandrakes? They work, right? Because all of a sudden, she's doing what? Having kids again. So she's having kids again. And she has several kids more. And at the end of her little having kids, she has, it says, a daughter named Dinah. Dinah. Now, that's kind of interesting because of all these kids being produced, there's only one, one female name, which would tell us what? What might that tell us? If there's, if there's one girl mentioned... What might that tell us? Different daddy. Well, different dad. Maybe this girl is going to be important later. Maybe she's going to play a role in the story later. I mean, why? You got to believe there are other girls being produced, right? But only one named. So maybe she's going to be part of the story later. Don't know. We'll have to see. Okay. And then finally, what happens with Rachel? She finally has a son and she names him Joseph. So we got we got Joseph. All right. Now, all of this is happening. Where is Jacob and his wives while all of this is going on? He is still with Laban. He's still with Laban. So he's with his father-in-law is watching all of this go on, you know, with it. Finally, Jacob says to Laban. I have served you and I will be on my way. It's time for me to go home. It's, it's time for me to go home. Look, I have, you're cry, you, you know, you've been very successful. He's a herder. You've been very successful because of my presence. Clearly you're being blessed. Then you need to do what? Let me go home. You let me go home, let but I've been working for you a long time. And all I got are these two, two daughters of yours. I think I deserve... Payment. Payment. Some kind of payment. I deserve some of your stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And and Laban says, what do you have in mind? Mm -hmm. And Jacob says, this is what I have in mind. And what, what is the deal that Jacob strikes with Laban? The dark sheep and the white sheep. He would okay. Sort them out. Yeah, I'm, I, what I'll do is I will take sheep that are Dark. Dark, dark, muddled. 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 You know, spotted, right? I'll take the spotted sheep and goats. The spotted sheep and goats. And and that's what I'll take from your from your herd. Well, most sheep are white. Most goats are black. Okay, so he's gonna say I'm gonna take the only the ones with spots. That's the one I'm, I'm taking the spotted ones. And Laban says, sounds like a good deal to me. Sounds like a deal. But Laban, we already know Laban is shady. So what does Laban decide to do? He moves all, he moves all of the ones that could produce, because evidently we're talking about not right now, mm -hmm. but the next generation of sheep. We're going to take all the ones that could produce these model sheep, and goats, we're going to move them someplace else, to a field, way away, which means what? Jacob wouldn't get Jacob is going to get 
white. Yeah, and is, if they're all white, that means yeah. Jacob walks away with nothing. nothing. Okay, so Laban is trying to do what to Jacob? Cheat him. He's going to try to cheat him. Not a surprise. Laban is a cheater. Is a cheater. But Jacob prayed to the Lord and asked the Lord for guidance. Did he do that? Mm -hmm. Heck no. Because Jacob is what? Also a cheat. You know, Jacob is also a cheat. And so, and this is, a, again, this is one of these stories that have, doesn't really have any basis in science, but evidently this is what ancient people believed. What does, what does Jacob do? Because he knows, he knows Laban has cheated him. What does he do? He can end his tent of, tent of the rest of the flock. Well, it's this weird story. It's a whole story about uh -huh. how he took branches. Where he took branches and put it in front of the sheep. And when the sheep Why would mated, they had striped and spotted spot sheep. Based on, I don't know. I mean, it's evidently what these ancient people believe. The branches did. Yeah, well, well. That, that if you put it in front of sheep that were breeding... This they is how you could produce. They would look at all the branches. I guess, and end up becoming spotted. Oh. And so, but it doesn't matter whether it's scientific or not. It happened. worked. Happened. It worked here because we now have a whole flock of model sheep of of spotted but sheep. This is one of the stories, like you always say, about how. It must be put in here for a reason because they really describe how he in great how detail. He's, you know, it's like that must have a meaning somewhere. And okay. and it must, it must the only thing I can figure is that it must be something people believed. So would happen. The people that were reading. Yeah, that were reading it or hearing. It. Believe that this is what if you wanted spotted sheep, this is. But nobody, you don't want spotted sheep. Uh, this is what this is how you end up with sheep that are spotted. You know, they get into a thicket maybe with these branches, and you end up with sheep that aren't the top quality. And uh, so Jacob is doing what to Laban? Setting him up. He's tricking him. He's cheating Laban. So Laban oh. cheated Jacob. Oh, bless you. Jacob cheats <laughs> Laban. Who finds out? So now he's got all the sheep. Jacob's got all the sheep because all of them are spotted. Who, who ends up finding out about it? Laban's Evidently Laban, Laban's son finds out that Jacob's cheated him and says, Daddy, Jacob's cheating you. You know, this is what he's done. And Laban no longer looked with favor upon Jacob. So Jacob being the man he is, Decides he's going to do what? Beat it out of town. You know, he's going to take his stuff and beat it out of town, going back to where his family, way back to his homeland. Yeah. Which, by the way, again, is in the north. He's not going south. Gilead is in the north. So he's going north. You know, going back to his land, right? And what does, so he's, and he's getting his wives and kids ready. Because we got to get out of town, because your your grandfather is going to do nasty things to your dad. So we got to get out of town. And as they gather their stuff to get out of town, Rachel does what? Takes things from her dad. Takes yeah. special things from her dad. In particular, they call it the household gods. What are we talking about? Idols. Yeah, the little idols. The little idols that they keep around. You know, kind of tchotchkes that they're keeping around, like a humble collection. She packs it up and, and she's taking it with her, right? And they, they get out of town. And what does Laban do? As they are hitting the road, heading back, heading west, back to the land, Jacob is going. What does Laban do? He goes after him, right? Laban's going to go after him. And so he's going, Jacob's going, he's going. What, what ends up occurring? The Lord came to him and told him to go back. Okay, well, they meet, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Lord does appear to, to, to Laban 
and uh, that not to do anything. So we, we see that Laban's not going to kill him. It's not looking to kill Jacob. Uh, but Laban certainly, we're going to find out later, that Jay, Laban wants his stuff back. And he knows who took it, right? And so they end up meeting, right? Jacob and Laban end up, end up meeting, right? And what does, because Laban says, why the heck did you do this, right? Mm -hmm. Why did you leave with my grandchildren and all the stuff? I, I hadn't been, you know, I hadn't been bad to you. And what does Jacob tell him? <clears throat> yeah, he says, look, I, I, I knew I'm heading home and I knew there was going to be problems. And you said somebody has taken your idols, right? Your household gods. But it wasn't me. I did not take your household gods. Now, in this case, is Jacob telling the truth? Mm, yes. Yeah, because who took the household gods? Rachel. Rachel. Rachel ends up taking it. So what does, what does Laban do? Because Jacob says, look, I, ain't, I didn't take them. And Laban says, well, I'm going to search the yeah, let me search, let me search the tents. To see, and and Jacob says, "It's okay with me." In fact, what? If you find your stuff in the possession of somebody in my little party, I will do what? The person shall not live. Kill I'll kill him. If you find your stuff with somebody in my party, I'll kill them. I am so confident that they aren't here. I'll kill them. Now, Jacob has no idea, right? That who has this Laban stuff? Rachel has Laban stuff. And Laban says, well, you, then you certainly don't mind if I search the tents? And Jacob says, go to it. Go to it. And so, and I love, this is a wonderful story. It's, it's written so well because we get this tension. We, the reader, know that Rachel's got it, right? Jacob doesn't. Laban knows somebody, you know, there's some place, but Jacob doesn't know. So Laban is searching the tent, and where does he start? He, he looks in, Le in Leah's tent and uh, looks at the tent of the two maids, right? Did Jacob's tent? Did Leah's tent? Did Bilhah and uh, Zilpah's tent? Which means the only tent left is, is Rachel. And we, the reader, know what? That she did it. That she hid That Rachel is guilty. Which means if Laban finds those idols in Rachel's tent, not only is she a thief, she is has to die. She will yeah. die at her husband's hand. Whoa! Talk about tension, right? And so Laban enters uh, Rachel's tent and says, "I'm looking. I'm searching your tent." <laughs> and this is another story that I'm not thinking, Judy. You ever told the kids? <laughs> uh, because she is. She comes into. He comes into the tent. And says, I'm looking for my little idols. I'm looking for my gods, my household gods. And um, I need to search your tent. And I notice you're sitting on a, um, a kind of bag over there. So let me start by checking out that bag that you're sitting on. And Rachel says, well, Dad. I'm having my period. It is my time of the month as I'm sitting on this bag. Go ahead. <laughs> and Laban says, well, since you put it that way, I guess I'll trust you. <laughs> right? And where are those little household gods? Where's she? Under the sack. Right underneath her. Right underneath her. Now, now think about it. This, this is a, you know. Underneath her some shady women. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, now understand, this is going to, and that's why it's really important, the, it's going to a people that follow a law that's, that holds blood in the high 
a stink. Blood is what carries life. And um, therefore, you weren't to have any contact with, with blood. Therefore, menstruation was a, a problem in the Old Testament. You know, that a woman was unclean because of the blood. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, her sitting on that bag made it unclean. unclean. Now, but we don't have a law yet. So it's not like Laban says, ooh, the law says. Because there isn't a law. Law's not going to come until who? Moses. Moses. Much later. So Laban is not guided by this law. But the people who hear the story are. And, and so they say, oh, oh, I know why Laban didn't do it. I know why David didn't. But also think about what the writer is very subtly saying about idols. You know, what is he saying very subtly about the, these idols that are sitting underneath Rachel? They have a hold on people. They have a hold on people, but they aren't very clean. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they aren't very clean. But do we even know if Rachel was telling the truth? Well, we don't. Although, yeah, you we know, we don't know the way for the sure. Whole story runs. It makes me wonder yeah. if Rachel just said that. But she did. She she but avoided. She wouldn't. Yeah, she avoided getting in trouble. Yeah, yeah it, it, death. So Laban says, "I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna search. I'll 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 take your word for it." <laughs> You know, and, and he leaves the tent, and what ends up happen, happening with... Um, Jacob went and talked to Laban, he was angry. Okay, he goes talks, Jacob is angry, talks to Laban, because Laban's made these accusations, right? And what ends up happening between Jacob and Laban? He asked him what his crime was. Okay, and what, so what ends up, and, and so we've got this awkward situation, because... Technically, Jacob has cheated Laban, mm -hmm. but technically hasn't broken any laws, right? Mm -hmm. And Laban has been just as bad as, as Jacob, you know, in moving flocks. So both of them have tried to cheat the other one, right? And what, are they, and what conclusion do they reach, Jacob and Laban? They make a covenant. We're going, to make, we're going to make a covenant. We'll make a covenant. I'm not going to pursue you anymore. If you don't pursue me. If you don't pursue me. And we're going to build a little little altar, and we're going to have sacrifice, and this, the covenant is now sealed. So there's a covenant between Jacob and Laban. Jacob goes to his place. Laban goes back to his place. We have peace in the land between Jacob and Laban. And Laban. So we're cool there, right? So this part of the story closes. But as we find, and, and in this, what role has God played in this pretty sordid story? This is not a, a story that says, ooh, isn't this nice? This is a pretty sordid story. I'm going to use Jacob as my moral example. I'm going to follow him. Uh, or Rachel. Well, I'll follow Rachel. Th these are not good people. You know, they're not moral people. Who's, who's hovering in the background in this whole story? God is. God is hovering in the background of this whole story. And God is driving this story because we know what about Jacob? That he fibs. Well, we know he fibs. What else do we know about it? That's even more important than he fibs. We know that he's loved by God. He is going to carry the promise. Just like Abraham did, just like Isaac did. Just like Abraham did who lied about his wife Twice, you know, just like Isaac who lied about his wife once, they carried the promise and so will, will Jacob. Now, as the story goes, we got peace between Jacob and Laban, right? But we have a loose end. What's the loose end in this story? Rachel. Well, we got Rachel. Rachel, but Rachel has a son has a son, and we got, you know, the so kind of, the, and, the, and the father leaves and doesn't know. So Rachel could still be involved, but, you know, things are with Rachel and Leah are doing okay. <coughs> you know, they got kids. Jacob's back in the land. But we got, we got a potential problem hovering in the, the background. What's the potential problem? Esau. Esau. What's that? Alice. Alice, did you say? Esau. 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 <coughs> we got Esau, because remember, according to that one strain, 
The reason Jacob ends up going to Laban anyway is because, because Esau is, is gunning for him, yeah. right? And so he goes there and, and he's back in the land, which means he's back in Esau's neighborhood. And we have unresolved an unresolved conflict with his twin brother, Esau. And we don't know how that's going to turn out. Although we have a pretty good idea how it's going to resolve. Is Esau going to kill Jacob? Heck no. Why do we know Esau's not going to kill Jacob? How do we know that? Because Jacob is the... Because Jacob's going to carry the promise. Jacob is going to carry the promise. But we don't know how that conflict is going to resolve itself yet. That we're going to find out next week, and I'm going to tell you something. We'll look, go through 36, uh, 43. Jacob will continue to be Jacob through this entire story. And if you think what he's done was kind of, kind of questionable with Laban, questionable with his brother the first time, questionable with Laban, Jacob is even going to be worse in what we're going to look at next week. He is going to do something that is absolutely despicable in, in Jacob. Jacob is going to oh, do really? something absolutely mm -hmm. despicable in what we look at next time, and yet he's the one that's carrying the promise. It's amazing, isn't it? It is absolutely amazing. Okay, let's have a word of God. A word of God. Let's have a prayer. <laughs> yeah. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity uh, to, to study your, your story. Remind us, as we, as we look at the story and sort of claim it ourselves, that, that you're in charge and that you work out your will through ways that we can't even conceive. Things that are almost inconceivable for us becomes part of your ways and part of your will. Just remind us as we struggle with what we see happening all around us, remind us, remind us, remind us that your will is always mercy and it's always compassion, always. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.